Uh, Professor Nelson, uh, welcome to IIT Kharagpur. Uh, we'll start with the first question. Uh, how do you feel IIT Kharagpur has been to you on your visit over here? Oh, it has been very nice, yeah. It's very nice and best, best. I've heard many interesting talks uh, uh, in here and uh, it is of course a very nice uh, climate. Even if it's a little bit cold, it is very warm compared to what I had when I left. So, <laughs> it is very pleasant. Uh, that's good to hear. <laughs> uh, moving on to your subject, uh, the string theory. We normally propose a theory and then uh, we normally have an experiment done and then have a theory in place to prove or uh, to explain the observation from the experiment. But for string theory, it's the other way around. We have the theory in place and we are trying to get up, uh, set up experiments to prove the theory. So what's your take on this? Yeah, I, I think it is, of course, uh, uh, true when you think of the string theory applied to this theory of everything. But honestly speaking, of course, it, uh, it has a lot built in originally which was taken from experiment. I mean, I, I told in my talk a little bit about the history of how we invented string theory. And in that game, uh, this Veneziano model, which is the ground of it, this was supported by some a factor about Hartron timers that met because it was Hartron that was the thing. But this was, for instance, one important thing was what is called linear trajectories. And this is that you find series of resonances so that the mass square grows approximately linearly with, uh, uh, with the number of the resonance or the spin of the resonance because the uh, fine point is that it is uh, successive spins. Uh, and this is uh, at least one input. Uh, and, and, and that uh, means that there are some important inputs. And this input is perhaps very indicative of strings if you think of it. And uh, I didn't mention that in my talk, but actually this is the way a string that gets longer and longer as it rotates, the bigger uh, uh, angular momentum give it, then its mass will precisely go up according to this linear trajectory formula. So this is an evidence which you in a way could have taken out of phenomenology and which tells that the hadrons are strings. So in that sense, there was a kind of uh, phenomenological string uh, in it, uh, which was taken from experiments. But of course, I must admit that for the theory of everything, the philosophy is that we shall only see the lowest string on each trajectory, on each uh, series of, of, of spin rising. And that, of course, gives no place for any evidence that it is linear, because a linear function which you only know one point of is not very impressive. OK, uh, moving on, you released a paper in 2009 when you talked about why the Higgs boson particles is so abhorrent that it cannot be discovered by the LHC, that it, it shall itself prevents its own discovery. Can you elaborate on this one? Yeah, this is a theory, a theory of Ninumia and myself, uh, based on there being backward causation. And I think, first of all, based on that we have, we, we take the action to be a complex instead of real number. Uh, action is first of all a function of a history and if you take it to be a complex function then it has an imaginary part mm -hmm. and this imaginary part will in the, in the Feynman uh, pathway formulation, I should say Feynman Dirac Wenzel formulation. Actually I think it is uh, very interesting. I learned it very late, but actually Wenzel uh, did this uh, uh, Feynman uh, Dirac uh, pathway integral formalism before uh, before quantum mechanics. So he in a way invented quantum mechanics before uh, in this formalism before quantum mechanics at all. Let alone that Dirac found the other one. <laughs> so in a way it should, but everybody forgot. This was in a way too early. Uh, 
So, and I learned that from an Indian uh, friend who, who, who came and told, because she had been advised by Wenzel. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, but this was uh, this story. Then the point, the main point of this story is that this imaginary part now, the bigger it is, the more it suppresses the likelihood that the history will be realized. So that means that it ends up, that's at least what we argue and try to convince ourselves, that it ends up giving a selection of the history to be that one which has the which has the smallest possible imaginary part of the action. And that is almost like a god governing the universe. And, and our artist told us that I should put the god in quotation mark, not to cause confusions. Uh, and uh, this uh, god in quotation mark, he is like a big leader of a company who tries to diminish the deficit so that he can make the deficit as small as possible. And this deficit as small as possible is analogous to this um, imaginary part of the action. So now it is as if the world is governed with a certain purpose. And uh, then we have this speculation in addition, that we look at the uh, uh, standard model Lagrange and the, 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 the present best theory, and then we find that there's one term in this Lagrangian that has another dimension than the other terms, in the sense that the coefficient in front of this term is the mass square of the Higgs, so-called. Whereas the other terms are coupling constants with, has co have coupling constants which are of, of, of a dimensionless character. And then you would say, oh, any uh, if you work with an energy scale that is, uh, if you work with the energy scale that is um, uh, the LHC scale or even lower, uh, the, uh, then uh, the the scale of the terms with the mass uh, with the dimensionless coefficient are in some sense given by this quantity coming in for the energy uh, 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 the the three and a half TV or. Uh, whatever it is. And, uh, but the term that has a mass square as a coefficient, that takes some fundamental mass square instead for that, and then if it should be a four-dimensional energy density or Lagrangian density, then it would have some coefficients which go of the order of the, of the LHC energy scale. But that doesn't matter. Once it had one that was, for instance, a Planck scale, that was, for instance, 10 to the uh, 17 or something like that, bigger, then this term would dominate. And this is a, a argument that would actually say it is a strange thing that the Higgs mass is not 10 to the 17 to the second times uh, bigger uh, than it is because that is what you would get from dimensional argument. So it's a great mystery why the mass is there. But now you have in the imaginary part of the action the analogous term, and this analogous term would now look like... Uh, should this now also be small for this mysterious reason, which we don't understand very well, or should it be big? And if it is big, it will dominate. And that would mean that this god in quotation mark would be interested only in the fields that go into that term. And since it was a Higgs mass term, it would only be interested in the Higgs mass square. So the god in quotation mark should presumably want to minimize the Higgs mass square as much as possible. And now this Higgs mass square is unavoidably getting uh, increased a bit when you have a Higgs moving, so he should dislike the Higgs. And, and therefore, people who make Higgs machines and could easily be stopped by a little political decision or little finance crisis or something, uh, they, they should be prevented from making a lot of Higgses. Uh, and at first we might have believed they should be prevented altogether from making Higgses, but that is not likely because there are also Higgses produced in the cosmic radiation. 
so this might be too much. So nowadays, but not really, I am on the way of, of sort of withdrawing. The theory doesn't work very well. The better the work <laughs> of NHC, the worse works the theory. But of course, as mm, I would tell you, it is always so that if you love your theory, you give it a few crutches before it dies completely. <laughs> and, and I would give it a little crush and say, yeah, that's right. This, this is, of course, not so good. But who says it should be uh, uh, caring for just one hex or a few thousand hexes? Maybe half a million hexes or a third of a million hexes is the Cox value. So until it has made that, it may not be so bad. But uh, uh, and, and the reason I want to, uh, but there's one point where it would be very bad, and that is if it comes still don't react, which means still don't kill LHC. Uh, at the moment when LHC reaches the same level of producing Higgses, have produced equally many as the big machine in Texas called SSC superconducting supercollider should have produced. Because this one is our best example of something happening. Because it was killed by, by the US Congress. They didn't want to pay it. A, a historian told me it was probably due to, the, uh, uh, to this uh, fall of the Mao and Gorbachev and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Because then somehow a major reason for going on building this kind of expensive things, which even got some few uh, or 20 or something milliards uh, more expensive, uh, it, it, uh, that paid for, that was a good reason for paying for that. That was a competition with the Soviet Union. But of course, the poor Soviet Union after the collapse uh, had no chance to compete. And their own small SSI uh, even died also. So it was uh, no reason. So it was a sad uh, story. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, almost you could dream, oh, oh, was it because of communism is bad? Or was it because God, in quotation mark, <laughs> wanted his machine in the United States be killed that he put in? Uh, a bit of crisis in Soviet Union. <laughs> Any interesting concept about that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, to the last question we'd like to ask is, to quote Stephen Hawking from his book, A Brief History of Time, he says, once we know the theory of everything, we shall know the mind of God. In this respect, how close are we, uh, how close are we to achieving the theory of everything? And does it need a God to exist? Yeah, I, I, it is of course a, a point I should mention that uh, that uh, people have, physicists have uh, embarrassingly often believed they were close to the theory of everything. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but after having said that, then I should probably say that, that I think we are probably pretty close. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and as I mentioned in my talk, uh, I think super string theory has a serious chance, although I would be surprised. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I have these alternative uh, theories in the class of which we have, for instance, this imaginary part of the action too. Uh, and, uh, and this uh, uh, alternative theory, which I have loved uh, perhaps too much in addition, this is what I call random dynamics. Uh, and in a way, I, I worked on random dynamics in my older time, which means beyond 31 or something, and, and, uh, uh, and before on string theory. Uh, but <laughs> but um, this one, I am seeing it having a lot of success. And very recently, I want to claim uh, that using this random dynamics and actually uh, in the in-between we could even have used instead just this imaginary action or we could just use a principle I call multiple point principle. Then uh, we got 
and I can point to the 10 years ago I published a paper together with Colin Frocker and Ta Takanishi uh, uh, in which the uh, Higgs mass is predicted to 121,8 plus minus 11. And uh, this would match the 124 and 126 which you found. Then it is corrected a little bit uh, by the top mass being known better. But first of all it's corrected by squeezing the error down to something of the order 3 to 5 or something like that. And, and then uh, uh, I think it's also going a little bit down. But that's very little, 121 or something, mm, uh, plus minus uh, 5 or 6 or something like that. And that is still compatible with this. But then Colin Parker told me also that, mm, uh, that we have another, an older version of this paper was that we should have the, we should have uh, that there, there should be borderline of not stability. This one, I should have said, was a borderline where our vacuum is just about to decay. Uh, the other one, or our, that it had decayed already in Big Bang, uh, but the other one which we made first, that was the bound where the energy density of the vacuum, of one vacuum and the competing vacuum was the same. And that we said was giving 135, but I think by by present uh, status it is giving something more like 130. But 130 with a similar error of plus minus five is also consistent with this. Mm -hmm. So now both the first uh, uh, way and our corrected value are about equally consistent with this result. But at least it is. The idea of having us on the borderline where the other vacuum passes zero and this, this is very well confirmed. And, and this is sort of probably the basic uh, content of that. So this is a little bit of an encouragement that it is like this. Uh, but uh, we would, um, uh, but I think we are doing small progresses. So this one is also close to being right. And, and, uh, and since it mainly means that standard model is right almost all the way up, it, it may not be completely the theory for what exactly goes on at the Planck scale, but it might be embarrassingly close by doing this. And including the story of the imaginary part of the action, then it is doing much better than other proposals for a theory of everything because then it's also in principle predicting the initial condition which is not predicted in principle by the super string theory. So it would uh, do better in that respect uh, but uh, it is of course making in a way for uh, for knowing God or something it's replacing God to some extent by a God in quotation mark and, and you could be worried about that. Uh, but, uh, but actually I think that the worries that one may have about uh, gods having the power is actually getting released by, uh, by uh, random dynamics. Because in random dynamics, you, uh, the fundamental theory is enormously complicated. So if there is a god that would decide that, he can do almost what he like, but the result is always going to be that we have essentially the standard model at the end, because it doesn't matter what he does, the physical uh, laws which will come out approximately at the end will be almost exactly the same. So in this case, this is a slightly different jail for God than what you would have in, in other ways. So maybe it is more satisfactory from that point even. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.